Hey up everyone, welcome to the Project X channel. A lot of things have been happening uh, in the past few months. If you check out my videos on the channel, uh, we've recently returned from Ukraine on an aid mission. In the meantime, I've got a project to do. I've got a very, very important project to do. And it's one that's special to me because it is an RSV Melee. I love the RSV Melee. It is my favorite bike in the whole world. I'm a massive Aprilia fan and a Kawasaki fan but Aprilia is a tip top for me. Um, so I am going to be painting, there's parts in here, parts there and in the other room. We've got fairing panels, we've got tanks, we've got carbon fiber parts to restore. I'm going to be painting this RSV Melee as a project for uh, Fast Bikes magazine. So I'll show you what I have got and we'll crack on. some of the parts we're going to start working on. So we've got these infill panels for the underseat infill panels are damaged there so I'm going to try and do the best I can with that to get the texture back. The carbon fibre pieces are quite faded so what I'm going to do with those is rub them down with possibly I'd say 800 to 1000 grit then we're just going to clear coat over them get them nice and back and shiny. We'll, we'll be starting with all these little pieces first, these little pieces, because I can get all these done in a day. So we'll straighten this out, find out, oh, looks like it's melted somehow there. That's possibly something to do with the uh, the uh, exhaust header, I'm, I'm guessing, but I don't think it runs down there. We're going to straighten these out best we possibly can and get them painted. These This V piece needs to be uh, in like an orangey red. It's kind of like this colour, actually. It's going to be painted in that colour. We've got the belly pans to do. I'm going to try and get, uh, I aim today to get this in primer and get, get these in primer and we'll focus on the tank. Try and focus on the tank. I'm going to do this last. I'm going to do the tank last because I've got, so I want to see. But yeah, what I'm going to do is get this place, because we're, because we're doing satin black, uh, people call it matte, but it's actually satin colour. We need to make sure this place is absolutely squeaky clean. You get one chance with um, matte uh, clear coats and satin clear coats. You get one chance because you get specks of dust on that. You can't buff it out. I love painting gloss, but doing uh, these matte satin colours, yeah, you need to make sure this place is squeaky clean. Clean it and clean it and clean it again. Cleanliness is the key when you're doing this. Right, uh, let's get some sandpaper. I'm going to go... 600 grit on those bits over there and then 800 on the carbon fiber and we'll try and get some primer on might clear coat those carbon fiber bits tomorrow okay the pillar and dunlop have been stronger here take the points move on to the next round and uh, try and win that one here we go this is his sixth double win of his career race one race two on the back wheel corsa has clobbered them in spain Two dominant victories as he comes across the line, victorious. That's the way I'm really wanted to start the season. All right, so I'm going to hit all these plastic panels with 500 grit. Uh, that way I can get some good adhesion. Now, some people use 400, but I find it leaves a lot of rough sanding marks to get out or fill with the primer. So 500 grit, I won't go any lower than that personally. I've never had any problems with it. All right, let's give this a sand. doing is trying to flatten this down 
it's all melt and bubble up in there. I can deal with that. I want to be careful here. I don't want to cut through, but this is quite nasty. We don't want any of this in if we can help it. I would personally have a new have a new one of those on there, but we'll deal with it the best we can. I've also got these infill panels. These go on the inner fairing. Um, looks like someone's start to sand them, but hard enough or not enough time to finish it. Uh, we're going to get these scratched out. These scratches are pretty deep in there. <clears throat> Looks like 240 or something. So we're going to get those out because that'll show straight through. We need some 500 on there. Right then. Looks a lot better that doesn't it? Yes. Fine piece of work. Fine piece of work, all nice and smooth now. All right, so the V piece is prepped and we're just prepping this right belly pan. There's a few things on here. Uh, this damage, it looks like it's melted from the exhaust there. That would be a little bit of a job to repair. I would have to get some, melt some plastic into it and reshape the plastic. But what I'm going to do on this occasion, that would take a lot of time. Um, what I'm going to do on this occasion, I'm just going to sand that back, probably notch it so it looks like it's a, a part of the bike. Plus, if uh, the, it's the pipes that's interfered with this piece before, then if we notch this, it's not going to make it any worse, is it? So that's what's happened there. It's melted. That's probably the main uh, link pipe that's come out and done that so yes there we go that looks a hundred times better doesn't it so i've sanded it out i should get rid of it and i've used my file sander this is a absolutely brilliant tool you need one of these in your garage it does all sorts of good stuff right so that is now ready i'm going to do the next one So because we have this problem uh, with the paper clogging, we're going to end up going through a lot of these sanding pads, probably use them all. We don't want to do that because that's costly. Um, so the alternative to doing this is wet sanding. If we can wet sand it, it won't clog up the paper, it will just simply turn to mush. I don't like wet sanding, it's messy, it gets everything wet, and you've got to get these panels nice and dry, but I think I'm going to turn to doing wet sanding. Yes. Also, some of these may look like they're dead, but you can actually wash them. And some of this, they still have the texture underneath, the sanding texture, but I will wash them and put them in a bag so I can use them again. Because they're only, they're only clogged, but you get that in a bucket of water, it should come straight off. Right, that all done. So it's the front mud guard next. This is a GSXR 600 front mud guard because our client has GSXR 600 forks in it. Um, this is fiberglass, yucky fiberglass, but will make it look nice and pretty. There's a lot of work to do on here. Uh, it's not just a case of flattening it off. I've got cracks in there I need to fill up. I might get away with some filler primer in that, rather than using any body fillers or putties, anything like that. So it's not, not an incredibly long job, but we're gonna get this nice and flat. But of course, you'd be wrong. Of course, going large isn't always the way to attract maximum attention. Okay, we've had a nice good clear up and all the panels are now sanded, so I'm ready to start putting primer on. Uh, I'll show you around them. I've not videoed myself sanding all these panels because I doubt very much you know sit there and watch me doing this so I've hung this V piece up I've got the two belly pans in the mud guard they're all going to be in red but I'm going to get some white primer on there there's a little bit more work more work to do on the front mud guard yeah I'll show, show you uh, I put some finishing putty there it's not gone off yet 
because there's a hole in it and a little scratch here. Only thing with uh, fiberglass is the gel coat can have air bubbles in it end up having to fill it all over. So when you start to sand the uh, gel coat down, you find there's air bubbles or craters. Can you see that there? Get closer. Those little specks, excuse me if it's blurry and flashing. Those little specks there are actually like fish eyes, you call them, where air's been trapped in it. So I need to put filler on that. I might try and get away with some filler primer first, but once you put filler primer on, it can be a bit of a pain. Right, so that's gonna be done, white primered. That's gonna be white primered, white primered, all this stuff here. And then we shall give them a blast of red base coat then clear. So what I've done, I've sanded it all down, I've, I've hetched all these surfaces, I've degreased it, I've got myself a tack cloth, and I've got two tack cloths. So what I want to be doing is using this one for the back of the panel. Because what I want, what I want to be doing is, uh, is taking the dust and contaminants from the back of the panel also. Because when we start to paint it, <coughs> I will dust a little bit on the back side. If you've got any fingerprints in there and um, grease, dust, anything like that, it can look a little bit of a mess when the job's finished. I want it to look neat, you see, so we want to make sure the back of the panel is all nice and clean, but we don't want to be using this tack cloth for the front of the panel. So this one goes to one side. We don't want any contaminants on the front. So what I've done, I've gone somewhere up here. Another, a clean tack cloth, a clean one, which I always keep in a packet, the clean one. That is for the top side of the panel. So what I'm going to do is, I'm not too bothered about dust contaminants because this is uh, primer. We're going to be putting primer on, so I'm, I have not got a massive concern with dust. However, we do need to get rid of most of it, okay? So it's less work for us then. So the tack cloth, I'm going to drag that tack cloth across there. I'm going slowly, I don't want to create static. And I'm going to do this twice before I start painting, okay? Ah, right. So, yeah. One last second. Right. is apply the primer on the awkward little bits so what i want to do is apply primer first get these little awkward bits touched in first and then i'll go around and do the main part there so when i get all my edges done first Try not to let it spatter. So that's good enough for a first coat. We're not going to try and whiten it all out. And same with the next one. So uh, I've tacked this off. What I'm going to do is start spraying these little bits first and around these edges before I go into the middle. All right.
is absolutely caning it down outside. I don't know if you can hear the rain, I'll show you. I've not looked outside yet, but it is really coming down out there. Let's take a look. Oh, get inside, get inside. So, excuse me, I'm pissed up through. Um, so, what I'm, what I'm doing is I'm putting primer on just to see what surface I've got. Because it's a large surface, some of these bike piles. I want to get the primer on and then see what I'm working with, see if it's ready or not. So, my final coat of primer, I'll get that on tomorrow. I've run out, so I'm going to go grab some more. I need to get the red anyway for these panels. Um, also, what I'm going to do is get some more white primer, two more tins, and get this surface as it should be, then primer it. I should be able to paint these, get them painted and perhaps clear coated tomorrow. So after that, when they're painted and clear coated, I will wet that cure and then I'll rub it down, get this decals applied to it and then we'll clear coat it again. Right. So this is my Aprilia. I'm going to get some more tyres on it tomorrow. I want, that's why I got it on paddock stands. I'm going to remove these tyres, wheels, sorry, and get some new tyres on it. It's got Michelin Power. RS on it and I just don't like them at all. It will not ride properly with these and for some reason They just feel too hard for the road. So I'm going to stick a road 5 on the back Um Yeah, this is my Aprilia If you've not seen it before if not go check out some of my videos You'll see me riding it. This is the cans I've made. I've not really ridden it with those cans and it sounds absolutely Awesome with those. I, I, I kind of wanted them short just like the RS250. I used to have an RS250 I made this aluminium bracket for it. it, needs a polished look. I made that from scratch. Pretty good, decent job. Um, lovely and clean, nice to, keep it, nice to keep it pristine. There's a few scratches on it and stuff like that, but I love this bike. This, this will always stay with me, this one. I'll never get rid of it. But this is my pride and joy. Absolutely love it. If you're not road, if you've never ridden one of these before, you must have a blast on them. They're absolutely fantastic bikes, these. A lot of bike for the money as well, especially the R models, and they are rapidly shooting up in value. I mean, rapidly. So you need to get one now if you want one of these. Right, so I'm gonna do half an hour's work, some more sanding. I might put a little bit more primer on this intake duct here, and then I'm gonna get myself a pizza and call it a night. All right, see you in a bit. <laughs> Take a look at what we've got. So this is nicely primed. White primer on red. We don't want to use grey or uh, yellow or anything like that because it will reflect in the paint itself. I'm gonna we're gonna paint the back as well. So I've tack clothed the top of these twice. I've also tack clothed the back because this is where all hairs and fibers hide. And as soon as you start painting, it disturbs those. And I'll land on your surface so this is tacked off nicely before I when I mix the paint when I mix the paint I'm gonna go back over it with a cloth again obviously you go in and out of the room you're gonna get um, you're gonna get some more dust landing little tiny pieces so I want to be careful of that okay so most people or painters, painters will advise you mix uh, these base coats two to one ratio recommended sense personally I it all depends on the conditions you're painting and your gun and your style as well so I just do 50 50 I find it works best I like to get put a little bit more thinners in and put lighter coats on then you get an even even finish so what I'm going to do I ain't going to do two for two to one I'm going to simply I'll put 100 mil in there 100 mil is way enough okay that should do quite a lot of work. So, 100 mil in there. Now, I said 50 50, but I'm going to put this up to 150. Give it a stir and see what we've got. I like to make sure it's nice and light. I'm used to how it flows. That's too thick, that is. I'm used to how it flows from the spoon. Uh, I'll stick a bit more in there. 
I just like to get mine nice and light. I watch it fall for spoon how fast it comes off there. If you get an aerosol can, aerosol can spray it into a cap and see how runny it is. You want it a little bit less runny than that, if that makes sense. But we can test uh, how to do this in a minute, how to get your consistency correct. That still looks a little bit thick to me, but I'm going to go with it. A little, bit, a little dash more in there. That's good. That feels alright. Right, I'm going to spray this on now. Right, so always start with your fluid wound all the way in, so air will come out. Flop trigger, nothing, okay? All I'm going to do, I've got my fan wound in, I'm going to wind that out. You can see the mark on it there. I'm just going to wind that out half a turn, and this fluid, sorry, I've got the camera in one hand. I'm going to take it out about probably one turn, then I'm going to test it again. So you can now see colour coming out of there, right? That's not a bad start. If I turn the fan in, the air pressure goes up. Alright, so we're going to turn that fan out. I want it to be, uh, I want it to be a circle, not like a line. I want it to be a circle, so I'm going to start touching up certain parts first. I'm going to let a little bit more fluid out of there, but that's a good, good spray finish, that is. Very light. So full trigger, that's what you get. So I'm going to dust on small parts at a time, just like this. Right, let's go for it. Just giving it another uh, little blow off there, make sure there's no sort of fibres on the surface. Just checking that out. Okay, so let's start with these bits here.
Okay, these are ready to go for clay coat now. A um, little bit of a tricky colour to put on that one. It's almost transparent. So you've got to make sure the undercoat, the, the primer, is all even. Don't have any rub through spots, something like that, because it is quite uh, transparent. It will show through. You've got to put lots of layers of this on to get it even. Right, so I'm happy with it. We had a couple of problems with the front mug guard got some dust nibs in there to sand them out and redo that carefully um apart from that we're good to go let's get some clear coat mixed and throw it on <laughs> 